Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Peter Weibel. I'm the head artistic scientific director of ZCAM. This is my partner, Christian Lölkers. Yes, I welcome from my side as well. And it is a pleasure for us to participate in this conference, which will open a new chapter in the digital art world, in the new use of the technology of digital tools. And our contribution to this new chapter in digital art uh, is the conception of an endless poem. We could also say our contribution is the question what are the options for poetry, for literature in the age of Web 3.0? Uh, and Christian Lölkes will explain to you first the structure uh, of this new Web, Web 1, Web 2, Web 3, which are the basic for our ideas. So. In uh, Web 3.0, or in Web 3 in general, um, the user uh, becomes more important in the decision on how content is formed. Not only he becomes a contributor, but also he decides more. So the structures become more flat and there is less of a central element. We want to take a look at how this different structure of how content and how of ideas are managed and how decisions are taken um, reflect in the way texts, poesy and content in general can be generated. So for this um, we took the idea of the Web3 as a distributed system, um, distributed physically in space, distributed in the way of creation and contributors and have lines of texts combined together into an endless poem. Endless poem because it is not more anymore attached to one creator, to one source, but to a network that inputs at different times, at different locations into uh, as what can be seen as a chat room. So we take the element of chat where content is formed line by line and see how this can be translated to a poem, which is also based on lines. In a strange but wonderful uh, coincidence, now in the 21st century, we have the technical tools to fulfill desires and demands from advanced poetry in the 19th century. In the 19th century, uh, we had French poets Malamé, Stéphane Malamé, Arthur Rimbaud, uh, and also Comte de l'Autre Rameau, hmm? which is a pseudonym. And this wonderful poet Comte de l'Autre Rameau, he demanded, he wrote a sentence, poetry must be made by all. This was a demand from avant-garde poetry in the 19th century. Poetry must be made by all. But we did not have the technical tools uh, even not the 20th century, to fulfill this dream and this demand. Today, with Slam 3, as Christian has explained, it's like this, so normally there is a, one author uh, who has influence and writes one poem. Please show the drawing. Uh. Yes. So normally, we have one core idea of an author who interacts with his surroundings and then writes a poem which is physically limited to a page. So it has a start, it has an end, it has a definite number of lines. And in the Web3, we like to think of the poem as being a network of individual authors that are all on the same level and their common contribution becomes the poem itself. So there has to be a start, so someone has to input the first line but from them, each uh, node, how you could call it in a technical term, um, sets lines a little bit like a group chat. Um, but the idea is that this group chat keeps evolving. Um, authors can join and can leave out. And each day, each time, contribute more and more lines, um, add more words, which then also can result in new lines. So, the, the idea is to see what happens if you, instead of creating something one, from one person on, on one page with, with a definite amount of lines and time and space, if you create the same content in a more open and distributed way. 
in the poetry before, there was one single author who to finish a poem. But now, with them three, the existence of a collective who participates in the creation of the poem is a necessary condition. That means that normally, so when the author has finished the poem, he can die. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and with a poet, dies the poem. It does not change anymore. Yeah, yeah. So it is finite. It is not endless. It has ended. The death of the author is the end of the poem. It cannot be changed. But now we have the opposite. When the author, the, first, the man or the person or the woman who writes the first line dies, it, we don't care because the poem survives. Because we have a collective yeah, that many people for decades, maybe for centuries, will continue the first line. Yeah. So this is a very important uh, change, a radical uh, revolution no? that indeed poetry must be made broad. That means we need all, we need a collective. Without the collective, it does not work. This is a condition of Web3. And the um, idea behind is also to understand from a technical point of view how these new technologies can interact with existing art forms. Um, as said previously, that everybody has to contribute to poetry. Well, the nature of Web3 demands collaboration itself, so it becomes a technical requirement. While before you could write a poem on your own, if you want to create something in this distributed um, uh, organization, then you have to be at least two people. So the collaboration is forced by the system. Um, the same way also that the uh, many ideas uh, like blockchain and the Web 3.0 um, compose, uh, hold the word chain in it. So it is always a chain of elements. It's something that is chain. The elements relate to each other the same way they would do in a poem. So for us, it's also taking existing structures and methods um, that are used for many other types of interactions on the net, mostly for payment, uh, for um, uh, the transfer of artworks, like being an NFT world, to understand these chained events and to use them for poetry. Christian described very good the technical basis for another revolution. Because normally poetry was something of the elite. Yeah? It was a model, more or less, unfortunately, of exclusion. Now it's just the opposite. Now we create with the digital tools the basis for a model of inclusion, yeah? a model of participation. Yeah? So everybody, like Lothar Mo has said, poetry must be made all. Everybody has a chance, everybody has a chance to participate to create a good poem. Yeah? So it's a democratic model of inclusion, which we need. Yeah? 21st century. What I dream of is that this endless poem uh, turns societies into a poetic society, not into a society of war or of solution, just the opposite, in a society of uh, respect, in a society of friendship, of mutual respect and admiration, because everybody can participate in the creation of one of the highest achievements of mankind. One of the highest achievements of mankind is the creation of poetry, not only with words, but also with music and drawings, etc. So suddenly, what was demanded by Boyce and Notre Dame, everybody can be an artist. Yeah? Yeah? Now we can fulfill it yeah? with these technical tools. Normally, when you write a poem on a page, on a flat surface. Yeah? Now with this tool, the poem is written line by line. Yeah? So it's a linear, yeah? a linear sequence, a linear chain of letters of science uh, in a temporal dimension. Huh? So poetry was always a temporal based uh, 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 art form, especially spoken poetry. Huh? Because the spoken poetry, which was for hundreds of years the only way huh? Huh? To, re to create and to receive poetry, you utter uh, vocals, sounds, and each sound uh, uh, annihilates the sound before. Huh? You only can understand me when you accept that the word I speak now yeah, kills the words I've spoken before. Yeah. So it's a little bit like music. So poetry was always uh, more or less a temporal based exercise. Yeah, yeah. But then came the book, said it was an exercise uh, on a two dimensional flat surface. But now again, this is technology. Even on the surface now, it's interesting, yeah, becomes a temporal based linear sequence of letters. So again, it becomes music and we have to learn 
to understand these sheet of letters as a kind of notes, uh, like the music, uh, and we have to follow them in a kind of melodic way. One of the best periods in the last 2,000 years was the poetry of troubadours in the 12th century. They had one maximum as one order, mots and son. Mots is words and son means music. The troubadour poetry, maybe even the beginning of all good European poetry, uh, was created in this combination. We don't need the music, uh, but only the visual appearance uh, of line by line uh, 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 is already uh, remembering us of this origin of authority in spoken language. So it means what we create now, but the endless poem is an endless line, a chain, a sequence of letters. Uh. So I would say that um, many could think that the idea of writing a poem line by line on a piece of paper, even if the paper would be infinitely long, is at the core not a new concept itself. But the technology that is now available allows to go beyond the limit of what's, what was previously possible. Um, to the amount of collaboration between poets, there are always very strong limits. There are limits of space, there are limits of available papers, but uh, with this digital tool, suddenly these limits uh, vanish and, and they disappear. Uh, it is possible to collaborate around the globe at the same time. Uh, it is not uh, tied to any kind of physical experiences. And I think we are also very curious to see what does it mean for the content if suddenly these kinds of limits are, are vanished and disappeared. So it is, it is, I think, also a good experiment uh, just to try out what these kind of technology innovations, even if they just take something and evolve it even further, do and realize at the end. Very important point. And the idea of an endless poem is a contradiction to the idea of the book, because you cannot make a book with endless pages. Even when you make an anthology of 2,000 years of poetry, it is not more than one or 2,000 pages. So to create uh, an endless poem, that means we are surpassing the books. We go beyond the books. This is very important. With this new tool uh, of Web3, we are able uh, to go beyond the limits of the book, beyond, beyond the frontiers of the book. So we are creating poetry in an open space which is really endless. Uh, so it means it's not only endless in time. As long as humanity lives, it can continue uh, everywhere, every time, uh, uh, to continue this poem. Uh. Normally, you are, a poet is bound as a prisoner to the book. Yeah? But now you can read the book everywhere you are, and you can, but you can participate with us to read new verbs, new lines of this poem. So we have different degrees of openness. Open space, yeah? because it's an endless book. Yeah? It's an endless time. It can continue even when the author stands. And it has an endless participation. There's no limit to the collective that participates. Uh, if you look at the, uh, the chained events, if we look at the concept of the blockchain or general in the network where nothing can be deleted, even if you stop, your contributions often cannot be deleted. So even if you leave, actually you never leave the poem. You never stop um, being part of it, you just stop contributing. Contrary to previous concepts, you are just the one who starts it, but you do not control it. So what you can say at the end, the endless poem is also a living poem, a poem which is supported by living people uh, for an endless time in endless space. Uh, as long as man can exist, it could be exist. So the endless poem is a living poem. It doesn't live by itself. Uh, it needs the life of other people, but then it becomes a living poem. Uh. This is also another radical revolution and evolution of literature in the age of Web3.